All right, Jordan, why don't we go ahead and get started? All right, that sounds good to me. Yeah, we definitely have a quorum at this point, so. Okay. Uh, then I call the meeting to order. Will you call the roll, please? The roll, please. Yes, give me one second. I'm trying to admit people here. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Brew? Here. Uh, Commissioner Shirk? Commissioner Templeton? Commissioner Wiley? Here. Uh, Commissioner Zoror? Present. Uh, Commissioner Davis? Here. Uh, Commissioner Finke? Here. Commissioner Roberson? Here. Commissioner Potter? Here. And Chairman Cooney? Went the wrong way. Sorry about that. I'm here. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, we have before us the uh, Chapter 353 Tax Abatement Sales Tax Reimbursement um, issue with uh, D&J Realty Holding, LLC, and Recovery Sales Corporation. Um, Jordan, I think, has a few things to start us off, uh, both about the status of the application and uh, kind of uh, what we thought tonight's meeting would look like. Jordan, if you want to go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to... Um start by kind of outlining what staff's expectation is for the uh, meeting tonight and that is that you will hear um, from staff and the applicant about the proposed incentive um, and we hope that the applicant will be able to make a presentation and then provide the commission an opportunity to discuss um, amongst themselves and have a discussion with the applicant uh, but we do not expect to necessarily take final action tonight as final plan documents have not yet been written. So basically the goal is to kind of get a consensus that this is acceptable to the commission and then staff and respective attorneys will go back and complete the work that needs to be done. And we will regroup in probably about a month to have final action on um, the incentive if if most are um, you know in looking that direction as far as approval and it makes sense to go forward. Um, so with that, um, if you're ready, Mr. Chair, I can just kind of give the brief overview and then I'll turn it over to the applicant to make a further presentation. Please proceed. All right. Uh, DNJ Realty Holdings LLC has applied to the city for incentives relating to the redevelopment project located at the northwest corner of 35th Street and Nolan Road, including the site of the existing Cargo Largo store. Um, the project involves the demolition of the existing facilities and the construction of the following a 525,000 plus square foot mixed use facility redevelopment of the existing Cargo Largo store, plus the construction of additional buildings intended for mixed use is yet to be determined. Um, in connection with the project, the developer uh, is requesting the following incentives. Um, real estate or real property tax abatement under the 353 uh, chapter 353 of the revised statutes of the state of Missouri, um, and that would include an 85% tax abatement for the first five years and then reducing abatements for the following years. Um, reimbursement from net new sales tax revenues generated by the project from the project by the city's one half cent street sales tax and what half of such net new revenues generated from the project by the city's one cent general sales tax for costs related to the street project plus annual interest and three reimbursement of net new sales tax revenues generated from the project by the three quarter cent sales tax imposed by the Nolan Road CID also for costs related to the street project plus annual interest. Um, so with that, that's kind of the high level view and I will turn it over to the applicant and or his representatives to kind of go into more detail about the project and the incentives that they're requesting. Thank you. My name is E. Pack. I am CEO of Recovery Management Corporation and managing partner of DNJ Realty. Uh, just to give you a little background, starting uh, with the operation itself, 
Uh, we became a, a neighbor in the community in 1986, so 35 years ago. Uh, we opened up in the building that was the former Alice Chalmers Park Distribution Warehouse. At the time that we opened, uh, we occupied half of what was then a 50,000 square foot building. Um, and the store itself was 7,000 square feet. So quite a bit smaller um, single client that we were serving at that time. The store had been moved from a location in Westport. So um, we have seen uh, a fair amount of evolution uh, and growth over the years in 1996, approximately, we started acquiring additional ground around us. By that time, we had already added on about 25,000 square feet to the facility. We were leasing probably 150 to 200,000 square feet in other uh, facilities and so the the idea when we began acquiring additional ground is that one day we would be able to reunite the entire operation in a single facility. Um, today we're about 430 employees, approximately 330 of those are outside of independence to stick with independence. So what has remained in independence over the years is our retail facility. Um, the store itself is now approximately 55,000 square feet. We serve 10 plus thousand customers um, a, a week. And uh, so the, the store alone is a, a very vibrant, uh, operation and certainly one of the major um, contributors to the retail uh, sales tax, uh, particularly along Nolan Road. Uh, the rest of our operation, approximately uh, 550,000 square feet spread out in four buildings, uh, um, is in Kansas City, Missouri in the East Cross East um, Bottoms District uh, on Front Street and uh, Front Street and Southern. And uh, so we have a, a e-commerce business. We have a weekly auction. Um, and again, the desire is to get that back under one roof. At, at various times we have uh, attempted to make this happen and, and in fact have, have spent money and made improvements uh, toward that end. It's probably been 15 years ago or so, but we put a crossing in uh, directly across from Truman High School. Doesn't It's not open yet because the infrastructure isn't in, but that would be it. Uh, the location of what would be the new westbound 33rd Street off of Nolan Road that is part of this project. We would also, and this appears to be maybe the third, fourth to last page in, in your packet, there is an aerial view uh, of the site. Um, you can see that 33rd Street goes west uh, across the site. Uh, to orient you, uh, that's 35th running east-west across the bottom. And of course, Nolan Road is the major north-south street on the, the right side of the page. Um, our existing Cargo Largo retail operation is on uh, 35th Street, uh, just west of the railroad tracks. So um, the building, uh, as, as Jordan uh, indicated, 
The footprint is approximately 525,000 square feet. We, the store would be in the southeast corner of that building. So roughly, um, you know, closer to the intersection of 33rd Street and Nolan Road. Uh, the building is um, not dissimilar to what you would see a big box distribution center, which is in fact similar to part of our operations. Um, so we we have a 36 clear structure in most of it. Uh, over the floor, we would have a fixed mezzanine. So we would actually have about 610,000 square feet uh, of space, counting the fixed mezzanine. So not quite as much square footage as we have presently, but we believe a much more efficient um, operation and, and use of space. So um, I, I mentioned that we, we do uh, have uh, today about 430 employees. Uh, we continue to grow. Um, and so um, by the time we would get the building built and occupied, I would expect that number to be north of um, 450. Um, the, the, the company does in excess of, of $70 million uh, today. So in, in terms of new benefits, to the city, uh, looking at the pilots that uh, we anticipate would be generated uh, off the uh, off the property, uh, and this is over a 25-year period. We're looking at just under 17 million of new pilots coming in. Um, you can see this is. Uh, this, the sheet that identifies the benefits that we would be delivering is, is in the package. Um, and um, as you might imagine, that, that grows over time. But the first five years, the pilots, uh, that new pilots that would be generated for the city or the tax, taxing jurisdictions would average 189000 over the first five years um, and the second five years grow to 211. Then years 11 through 20, uh, approximately 713,000 a year. In the last five years would be over a million and a half in new pilots um, uh, annually. So, Again, looking at the entire 25 years, new pilots of about 17 million. The uh, existing pilot base is approximately two and a half million. So uh, about 19,300,000 in pilot revenue. The, the sales tax number is, is a significantly larger number. Uh, the day that we move into independence, we'll probably be generating, bringing new sales, new taxable sales in excess of $20 million. So again, looking at those five-year snapshots, we anticipate that net new sales tax revenue uh, for the first five years is going to exceed... Four, $340,000 a year. Uh, the second five years exceeds $670,000 a year. And um, years 11 through 10, almost a million seven annually. And in years 21, I said 11 through 10, I think, 11 through 20. Um, in years 21 through 25, over 2.3 million. So net new sales tax revenue exceeding $33 million. Um, 
if we add that to the existing sales tax revenue um, from the CID uh, over the life of the project, it exceeds three million, and um, city sales tax revenue from our existing sales um, are estimated to exceed nine and a half million. So. Adding those up, it's it's more than forty six million dollars in sales tax revenue generated off the project. Um, we uh, is is um, just going back to the employees. We we would expect almost four hundred uh, employees added to the Independence location. Uh, and um, by consolidating our operation there in independence, we would be able to not only retain the sales, sales staff, as we were talking about. Not only retain the sales tax as. The microphone is what needs to be not that's your speaker Anita. okay i think we fixed the technical difficulties um so um in in terms of what we'd be able to retain in, in independence by by keeping the business there we're talking about uh over a hundred jobs um, sales tax, the, the existing tax base of over nine and a half million. Uh, and then sales tax revenue generated from the CID, which exceeds 3 million. The, the project cost at this point is now, unfortunately, approaching about 48 million. Uh, the, just in the last four months because of raw materials, there's been a significant increase in, in project cost. I, I would also say that um, we've been working uh, both with the city and the independent school district to make sure that the proposal complies with city policy and is is at a level that um, makes sense, is acceptable to the school district. So that is um, an overview, certainly willing to address any questions that the committee may have. Do the commissioners have any questions? Um, Mr. Pack, yes. do you have a do you have a sense of where your existing employees uh, reside now, um, and whether there would be a uh, impact of of relocation, not cost of relocation for you certainly, but but a, a relocation impact uh, given the, the change. We're we're very sensitive to that. We, um, work hard to protect our re workforce and certainly consider that. We think that, uh, and to, so we have uh, employees that, that live from Belton to Richmond. And um, because of our current location, we have gained more employees from what I would call the center city than when the non-retail part of our business was located in the far northeast in Carefree Industrial Park. So um, when we made the move to Front Street, we lost relatively few employees. We found that 
it was about 50-50 in terms of some people traveling further and some people, um, you know, traveling a shorter distance. We think the law, the move to independence uh, in, in large part because of the workforce in the center city, some of those who travel to work by bus, we think will it could be somewhere from five to 10% of our employees. So um, certainly not something that we take lightly. Uh, we anticipate working closely with Jody Davis and, and folks in independence to, um, you know, to hire locally. We think it represents a great opportunity for residents of, of independence, we just um, the, today an, announced in in both our independence facilities and in um, our Kansas City, Missouri facilities, and across the board, two dollar an hour raise, which, as you can imagine, was was well received. So I think that even based on today's dollars, which will continue to accelerate. Um, we did that one because, you know, of the people that work for us, but also because we think that to attract the quality of people that we need to attract, that we, we need to be paying, uh, more than competitive wages. So yeah, it's, it's, it is a, um, something that we will, will, need to address and start addressing early in the process long before we move to the new site. Mr. Pack, Laurie Dean Wiley, I have two, a comment and a question. My sure. comment is, um, it's always great to hear a company that wants to build and grow and make their entire home in independence. So thank you. Um, my second my question is about the retail side. Mm -hmm. um, when do you anticipate the retail side closing? When do you anticipate it reopening? And will there be any disruption to employees during that time of no jobs? Um, I, I didn't know you were gonna ask about the no jobs. I was gonna tell you unequivocally, there will be a disruption to our yes. work. Yes, do we have any idea what time? Because you know, many of but, us are going but, but, and buying things. But <laughs> no, we, we um, a lot of our business on, on the, what I would call the back of the house is, is real time. We receive things in the morning we are contractually obligated to process those things within a certain amount of time. We cannot afford to have any part of our operation, in, including our, the sales in the front of the house, parts of the operation like the real retail store closed uh, for any period of time. So I'll describe what at this point may be a somewhat of an ideal timetable um, that we begin site work in November of this year uh, when the weather breaks, hopefully sooner rather than later next spring, we can start building out of the ground and, and by the end of 2022, the building is built. Uh, because of the seasonality of, of the business that is felt most in the retail store, we would not attempt to move the retail store um, during uh, peak season, which is probably on a practical basis from the perspective of being prepared any time between October and January. It, it would just present many challenges that would be difficult to overcome. So what we would anticipate is um, closing uh, the existing retail operation one night and opening up in the new facility 
the next morning without any type of disruption to employment or retail operation. Commissioner Potter. Thank you. Thanks. Um, really just a couple of questions. Thank you for the presentation, uh, Mr. Pack. I, I appreciate it uh, very much. Um, I, I really just have two questions. As you know, um, um, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> we're, we're right there, right across Lane Court from you. Um, what is your um, anticipation for the traffic load on, on Lane Court? What's, uh, what, what do you, uh, how do you see that being used with the new development? Sure. That's um, question one, and then I have another question, so go ahead. Okay. So um, what I, I don't think I addressed is that Weatherford, which is picked up today off of 31st Street on the north end of the site, dead ends. Um, and then, of course, Lynn Court off of 35th. Part of the road work would include connecting those streets. So there will be improvements, both widening at, on, I think the street is going to be called Weatherford, and I'm not okay. positive, but there will be widening on the north side of 35th Street on, on that street. There will also be widening on 35th Street in terms of turn lanes, right-hand turn lanes into, um, into the site. Um, we do anticipate um, that there will be both customer traffic and and truck traffic on on 35th Street going into the site, um, and we anticipate that uh, more of the customer traffic will flow into the site in the new inbound road, 33rd Street off of Nolan. We've, we've done a number of traffic studies with, uh, you know, over, over the years and, and have worked closely with staff to address the traffic issues. I appreciate that. And obviously, I think you can see where I'm coming from. I mean, obviously, if there's a lot of traffic that, um, um, well, it could have an impact on, on, on people getting to the library. So that's just, just kind, of my, kind of my question. Um, yeah. And... <clears throat> And so in terms of truck traffic, it's sort of follow up to number one, in terms of truck traffic, I really have never paid attention, it, it, but it feels to me like trucks come on a somewhat regular or scheduled basis. It's not like they're coming 12 hours a day. Um, right. The truck traffic is um, happens primarily early uh, in the morning, say yeah. before 830 um, or overnight. Mm -hmm. There, there's one exception to that, and that is, I mean, in in terms of primary daily truck traffic, uh, we have a what we call a bid sale, which is equivalent to a large silent auction. It happens on Thursday, um, and then loadout for the auction is on Friday. And so, what we see is anything from passenger cars to um, box trucks. We we really have relatively few tractor trailer type of, of pickups, but there there are some. Actually, those in today's environment come on Monday, where they don't have to deal with the the traffic of of Friday. So, in our design of the roads on the west side of the site and the truck court and just additional parking beyond far beyond what is required by code. We've we've addressed these issues as as best as we know how. Well, and, and I appreciate that. I really and, and of course building up the uh, building up Lynn Court or Weatherford, depending upon that, whatever it's called, um, it is important um, so that our customers aren't dodging you know, the wear and tear of the street uh, right. in order to get into our parking lot. So, uh, but it sounds like it's a really, really good plan. And, and of course, you know, I've, I've been around independence for a while. I know there've been fits and starts and trying uh, to do something to the north of us for quite some time. Um, 
and this may actually be better answered by city staff, but there are no remaining bonds, TIF overlays, anything like that in this property. This is the, everything's clean and this is the only thing we're talking about. Is that correct? You're asking that question of staff, staff, pro right? Pro probably staff no, would be better to answer that. I'm sorry, Mr. Pack. No, um, I, David, if you want to correct me, I, I believe that's correct, that there are no longer any incentives. I know that the TIF has expired a few years ago. The TIF was the only one that I was aware of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I'd lost track, so thank you. And I'm sorry, Mr. Pack, I should have reserved that question. Thank you for answering my questions. So it, I guess I should correct myself. It is within the CID, but that was a, a part of the packet and a part of the incentive for what we're talking about today. Other questions? Mr. Pack, I have several. Uh, just a sure. little clarification. Um, so you'll the, the plan would be that you would consolidate all your operations to this site. That's correct. All right. And I thought I heard you say that you had 430 employees now. Is that right? That's correct. So we would anticipate presumably that most of those jobs would be brought uh, to this site. Is that right? Right. We'll, we'll have some leakage because of the move, but we have to replace them. All right. And so according to the uh, materials, you have about 100 jobs uh, at the location right now. Correct. And then so uh, approximately, and I appreciate that there may be, that these numbers are approximations, but another, you'll add another 300 and let's say 300 jobs just in your operation. Correct. And then the expectation or at least the, 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 the study that we were provided with showed that over the course of the project, the estimation would be that there would be an additional 398 jobs to those roughly 400 jobs. Uh, no, that's from... not, that's not an addition. So right now our 300 and uh, um, approximately 330, I think I said, jobs are in Kansas City, Missouri. We have, as of today, about 48 openings. Um, so um, that workforce, a year and a half from now, moving to Missouri is going to be approximately 400. I mean, moving to Independence is going to be approximately 400 jobs coming to Independence from Kansas City, Missouri. All right, and so then on the material that we were provided with the number of new full-time employees, which the number we have is 363, that, that basically captures your operations being consolidated here. That's correct. All right, and then, and then with regard to the additional phases of the development, there's an expectation that there would be additional employees that uh, from, if I understand the proposal, aren't necessarily your employees, but are employees driven by whatever those, however those phases develop. That, that's correct. All right, very good, thank you. Um, to Commissioner Potter's uh, questions, the uh, access that you've actually already constructed um, just across the street from Truman, it looks like uh, from your plan that that really sort of is going to be the most direct route into the the new development would that be right that is correct yes and so uh, have you have there been I don't, have have you had any studies done about whether or not that direct route might in fact have the um, effect of lowering the traffic on 35th street um, we have not okay. pursued that and then will you be able to also uh, access the site from, um, I guess it's 31st Street? 31st Street, yes. Um, uh, very good. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there other um, questions from the commissioners?
don't see any raised hands and I'm not hearing anything. Are there any um, uh, concerns or other um, issues that any of the commissioners want to bring to the attention of staff so that if there's an opportunity um, to address those before we come back for our final um, determination in a month or so, would you let me know? Commissioner Davis, I see you're you're I just want to make sure. Mind. Yeah, sure. I just want to make sure I understand. Are you are you saying if we have additional concerns between now and then or additional concerns today? Sure. No. What I I mean, my understanding is that the while they while the city and the developer put together the final documents, part of that process would also involve if there was any concerns that the commissioners might have that perhaps the those could be addressed in those final documents as well. So my mm -hmm. my intention was if you if you have those concerns now, um, it would give the it would give them an opportunity to address those. Correct. So this is Dave Martin from Gilmore and Bell uh, Bond and Economic Development Council to the city. And our real reason for coming in front of you tonight was to present the concept of the project. Yeah and the abatement request that had been made, which is, uh, it's a special project and it's a specially tailored abatement request. And we wanted to make sure that there were not concerns from the commissioners with respect to the level of abatement, or if there were that we had an opportunity to address those concerns before we came in front of the commission, um, anticipating approval or denial of the request. Commissioner Potter. Well, I, I'll just react a little bit uh, just to kind of give um, uh, uh, Mr. Martin some uh, reaction as well as the city uh, from a from a sort of a 50,000 foot perspective, um, you know, certainly looking over the, the grade card that the city has put together, um, that is extremely helpful and certainly helps us to understand what it is. Uh, uh, that we're considering, number one. Number two, something that's always extremely important to the other taxing entities is that there is a pilot, that there is money being passed through in year one, because we always know these developments are most valuable in years one, two, three, four, and five. And so if we don't get anything until year 23, that really handcuffs us. So getting a pass through in year one is a very positive thing. You know, would I prefer it to be a 50% pass through? Absolutely. But getting something, you know, it's half a loaf. Getting something is certainly better than, than nothing at all. Um, as a neighbor of, of the area, we are extremely excited about development in, that, um, in those fields. Those fields are an attractive nuisance right now. And, and getting something developed and something positive in that area is something that, frankly, we're willing to see, you know, our pilot a little bit lower if we can get that attractive nuisance settled. And so the, the question that I would like addressed goes back to the question that I asked Mr. Peck, which is about the traffic flow a little bit. I mean, I, I think I'm comfortable with the number of cars I, I think we're going to be fine in terms of the number of vehicles going back and forth. I just want to make sure that Lynn Court gets built up enough so that it can handle all the heavy trucks. Uh, you know that there are turn lanes um, that that can accommodate that, so that and so that um, the people of the community don't necessarily feel like you know it, it's too much of a hassle to go to the li library because there's too many big trucks or things like that. I don't think that's going to be the deal. I mean, I really don't. And I think Mr. Mr. Pack is is committed to making sure to build up Lynn Court so that, that we don't get a lot of potholes and things in there from the heavy track track, uh, the tractor trailer traffic. But those are the types of assurances that I would want to have in terms of the development for our next meeting. Um, so that was kind of a 50 foot appraisal, but also a very micro level appraisal when we're talking about the development itself. Um, and hopefully that was helpful. Thank you, Commissioner. Other comments, questions, concerns, observations? 
uh, Chair, Chairman C Cooney. Yes. Um, question I have, and I don't, I didn't hear it addressed, and and I think you kind of addressed it a little bit in your questions about the further employees. Uh, is are there any particular limit? Do we intend anticipate any particular limitations on the other development uh, pieces from? It looks like uh phase three and phase four uh where those would not be uh particularly um uh cargo largo uh facilities has there any been, been any discussion of that jordan or or tom um I don't know of any discussion of particular uses for those, so maybe the developer or the applicant can touch on on that. We um, I think I mentioned that we continue to grow. We could see from the onset occupying, reusing the retail building for some specialized operations. Um, the things that we have thought about most seriously uh, tend to be relatively lower traffic, uh, but, uh, such as wholesaling. Um, that's, that's a growing part of our business um, that is in some ways a little bit different than the rest of the operation and doesn't benefit as much from being within the same envelope. Um, so um, that, that is one possibility. It's, it's a little premature um, to, to really determine exactly, but as you might imagine, this um, move is really important to us for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, we've worked hard to develop the workforce that we have. We've worked hard to be a good neighbor um, and a contributing neighbor. Uh, we, um, it is an investment unlike anything that we've ever made before, quite frankly. And, and so um, we're, we're highly motivated to make sure that whatever is there is a good neighbor not only to us but to the community so that is really going to be high on the priority list when we consider the potential uses there and i i want to echo you know what the other commissioners have said uh you know the appreciation to uh consider uh, independence um from school board's perspective, you have been a good uh, corporate citizen. We're glad to to have you um, more so in this area. Uh, logistics are obviously a uh, large and growing area, and so um, you know we hope to continue to work with you in, in those areas of of career education as well. So thank you uh, for uh, you know bringing the jobs here and and. Uh, and investing here in independence. Uh, Dr. Hurl and I have had some very preliminary, uh, I don't want to make it more than it is, but some very preliminary conversations about um, internship and other types of programs that we can coordinate, particularly with Truman High School, but the independent school district in, in general. All right, uh, other questions, concerns, or observations? Well, this is Blake Roberson. I'd like to make one quick observation. I, I would uh, agree with what Mr. Finke said based on the interest of the independent school district. And based on that scope of the project, its proximity to Truman, uh, we really do support this TIF because the jobs are going to be created to help 
our school district as well as the uh, uh, AV and value of the district is beneficial for our tax base. And uh, DPAC has been, like he said, a very good neighbor to Independence and has worked very well with the Independence School District. And Mr. Pack, we thank you for that very much. Well, thank you. It's been a good partnership. Yes, it has. Other questions, comments, observations? Commissioner Cooney, uh, I'll just say that after hearing the other commissioner's comments and um, and also reading the notes on the scorecard, um, I just want to say I, I do think that this is the correct path for this project and you know I'm supportive. Um, I welcome uh, a vote on it at our next meeting. Thank you. All right. Um, hearing nothing further from the commission, I think um, at this time, uh, Jordan, what we ought to, what, what, what the expectation would be is that we would adjourn uh, today's meeting. Uh, do we want to get a date on the calendar for uh, our next meeting, or do we want to wait on that? Jordan, I'm, I'm not sure we're quite ready to set a date. So the next phase is uh, to start working on producing a Chapter 353 redevelopment plan and also the document that governs the relationship between the city and the developer, um, which will be a development agreement. And at the point that we have those two documents prepared, we can do two things. We can trigger the legal proceedings, which is a hearing in front of city council after notice to the taxing jurisdictions. And in between the time of that mailing um, and the actual council hearing, we can come back for EDIC consideration is the plan. So I, I think we're, we're not quite ready to set a date, but we're close. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Martin. Um, all right. So then, um, if there's nothing further from the commission, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Martin. Martin. Yes. Second. Yes. Yes. Laurie. Hang on just a second. This Mr. Is... Brew, Commissioner Brew, go ahead. Yeah, I think maybe we ought to recess instead of adjourn. That would recess the meeting. Okay. Well, since we don't have a date certain to uh, to you know have the meeting again, I think it's probably appropriate to uh, just adjourn the meeting and call a new meeting um, when okay. we're going to. I'm with that. I'm with it. And I'm. I did hear a motion in the second. And I think uh, Lori was the second. I didn't. I don't know who the first. Who the motion was made by. Maybe you got that, Jordan. I did. Yep. Okay, great. I, I don't recall, Jordan. Do we need to call the roll on a? No, you can just do a voice. That right. is fine. All right. All in favor of the motion to adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Nay. All right. That motion carries, and we are adjourned, waiting to have new dates circulated when this proposal is ready to be voted on finally. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. to see everyone. Good night.